If G is a group and H and K are subgroups of G, then the intersection is also a subgroup. Uh, first, it's probably worth noting that this, this symbol means subgroup. A lot of people might have never uh, seen that. So, proof. So, we'll suppose they're subgroups. So, suppose H and K are subgroups of G. So there's three things to show. First, we have to show that the intersection is not empty. That's pretty easy. Uh, since H is a subgroup of G, we have E and H. Likewise, since K is a subgroup of G, we have E and K. So E well, it's in H, it's in K, so it must be in the intersection. The intersection is what they have in common. All right, this means that H intersection K is non-empty. We are 33% done. Now we have to show it's closed under the group operation. So suppose we have two elements, X and Y, which reside in the intersection, H intersection K. By definition of intersection, this means that X and Y are in H, and X and Y are in K. Now, I won't write this, but since H is closed under the group operation, so it needs to be said, then XY is in H. And since K is closed under the group operation, again, it should be written, then xy is in k. So xy is in h, xy is in k, so by definition of intersection, it lives in the intersection. Finally, suppose we have some element x, which lives in the intersection. Again, by definition of intersection, then x is in h, and x is in k. Again, this should be written, but since h is closed under inverses, then the inverse of x also lives in h. And since k is closed under inverses, the inverse of x lives in k as well. And once again, by definition of intersection, the inverse lives in the intersection. It's a really easy proof, but there is a lot going on. Um, so it's, it's worth understanding every single step. So therefore, H intersection K is a subgroup of G. And that completes the proof.